intelligence, experience, knowledge, learning, whatever words you want to use, are the bedrock of what we're going to achieve in this state in the future. You cannot avoid it. Words that guided Dr. William Friday's life, his career, and now his legacy. A belief that education is key to the future. Today, the state's best known champion of higher education, former UNC System President Bill Friday, died at the age of 92. Thank you for joining us. I'm Deborah Morgan. And I'm David Crabtree here on the Carolina campus at the Old Well, an icon here on this campus. And we're here to remember an icon, although Bill Friday would never have really wanted us to refer to him that way because he never took himself very seriously, Deborah. In fact, he took what he did very seriously, but not himself. As you mentioned, Bill Friday was 92. He died in his sleep this morning, a very peaceful passing, we understand. And he leaves behind a remarkable legacy. Bill Friday was born in 1920, growing up in the small town of Dallas, North Carolina. He attended the old Wake Forest College, graduated from NC State in 1941. While at State, he was the editor for the school's newspaper and president of his senior class. Friday served in the Navy during World War II, then went to law school at UNC Chapel Hill, earning his degree in 1948. Eight years after leaving the classroom, Friday was named the acting president of the entire University of North Carolina system. It's a position he held for 30 years, leading the system through the civil rights movement. Friday also continuously fought with the General Assembly over academic freedoms. He helped push for and finally helped defeat a state ban on government opponents speaking at college campuses. During his time as president, the UNC system grew from three schools to 16. He also increased the academic requirements at those institutions, making the UNC system one of the most well-respected in the country. Bill Friday was called by many the most powerful man in North Carolina in the latter years of his tenure as the UNC system president. Friday retired from his post in 1986, yet his work in academia did not stop. He served on several national education boards, including task forces formed by Presidents Lyndon Johnson and Jimmy Carter. Friday also served on the Knight Foundation National Commission on Intercollegiate Athletics, which oversees and guides the balance between the classroom and sports on campus. We've had instances of universities in this country winning national championships graduated zero. Bill Friday was still active on the sports and academics issue as recently as February. He served on a panel at Carolina that debated the future of athletics at universities. The discussion came in the wake of the football scandal at UNC where players were linked to illegal benefits and academic misconduct. Friday said the solution is simple. We have come to the time now where there is no other place to go except to the institutions themselves. We have got to take charge of the situation we're in. A month earlier, he stood up against proposed tuition hikes. Keeping these institutions strong and vital and open is the future of North Carolina. And just last year, a coming home for Bill Friday he returned to the room he lived in as a freshman at Wake Forest College back in 1937. It was his first step into a real world that he spent a lifetime trying to make better. Again, Bill Friday passing at the age of 92. All day long, people have been coming by the well. I mean, Ed Wilson, you get a shot of the flowers here. This was University Day here on the campus today. Tons of flowers were there for the students and faculty and everyone to see. When they heard of the passing of Bill Friday, they decided to march from Memorial Hall here to the Old Weld. And one by one, students and faculty placed these flowers there. There are other flowers here that have been donated by florists today, 1,500 flowers for people who just may want to come by tonight and remember Bill Friday with the lowering of a flower here at the Old Well. All day long, the tributes have been coming in as expected, as anticipated by so many people. Former Governor Jim Hunt was a very close friend of Bill Friday's.
He spoke with us on our new newscast today and talked about how Bill Friday had great characteristics, including the ability to connect with people. It was his personal qualities, the way he related to people, cared about people. He was never trying to be a big shot. He always wanted to work with people. He saw goodness in them and interesting things about them and their families. Uh, but it was the fact that he was so committed, driven, to build this university system, get our children there, to help them be their very best. That's what you sensed in Bill Friday, and you knew that he was given his life to do it. You know, our current governor, Beverly Perdue, also weighed in on the passing of Bill Friday today, and she told a story, a very personal one, about he knew how to seize an opportunity to live a full life. Let's listen. He got mad at me in the 90s when I was a part of raising tuition, and he talked to me about how a coal miner's daughter ought to have more sense than that. And I heard what he said and agreed with him and have worked with him to keep tuition down. It, he cared about people. Purely in now, throughout the weekend, you will see state flags flying at half staff around North Carolina. The governor decreed that earlier today. That has not taken place at every, on all state buildings yet, but we're expecting it to over the weekend. With the notoriety that Bill Friday deserved in his life, several buildings here in the Triangle bear his name. A couple on university campuses, one on the Centennial Campus in Raleigh of North Carolina State University. By the way, as I mentioned earlier, that's where he graduated in undergraduate school. And then, of course, the Friday Center here in Chapel Hill off Highway 54, a major center where people gather for different types of meetings and functions, news conferences, you name it. Classes at times are also held there, and the Friday Center named for William Friday and his wife, Ida. WRAL's Erin Hartness has covered Dr. Friday for many years. She's covered events on this campus for many years. She's joining me now. Erin, I know you've had some personal memories today. We talked about that earlier, particularly at one time when he remembered your hometown and knew exactly where you were from and what happened there, gosh, 70, 80 years ago. You know, David, I love to tell this story because I think it is so indicative of President Friday. One of the first times I met him and interviewed him, he's so genuinely interested in people and he was asking me where I was from. And I said, well, I'm from this town in Georgia called Gainesville, Georgia. Doubt you've heard of it. It's near Atlanta. And he said, Gainesville, Georgia. I know right where that is. I remember going through there as a boy with my father when a tornado had passed through. Gosh, that was a long time ago. What year was that? And I looked at him and I said, President Friday, that was 1936. He just had such amazing knowledge and he could remember so many things and he had so much to share. And of course, he's being remembered on this campus today for his wisdom and his vast impact in this state. Rarely has a single life meant so much to so many, but rarely is there a human being as extraordinary as Bill Friday. He's made this university what it is today. Friday believed passionately in the accessibility of education for all students in the state. He advocated high quality schools with affordable tuition. And all of us who have who've carried those torches since then did it because of him. Friday was the man leaders like Chancellor Holden Thorpe turned to for advice. He never let the people at the very top forget just how important the mission of higher education was for all people all over the state. The university plays a vital role in their lives uh, in many, many different ways. And I think that was what he always reminded me that I'm entrusted with the university of the people. That inspiration is felt by students like Lauren Hovis. The first thing I think of is, as an, is an advocate. He was an advocate for this university. He meant so much. He's done so much for this university. And then again, you know, education in North Carolina. So it, it's a sad day. Day, but also a day to, to take some time out to remember um, a man who dedicated literally his entire life to, to higher education. A man who shaped higher education in North Carolina for decades and never stopped being a teacher because of the way he lived his life.
And I've spoken to so many people about Bill Friday in this community today, and so many of them have said the exact same thing to me. They've talked about how approachable Bill Friday was, and he certainly was. It didn't matter if you were a political leader or a student or someone in the community who just wanted to walk up and chat with him. He was truly willing just to spend his time talking to anybody about anything they wanted to talk about. But most importantly, and what was always at the forefront of his mind, was higher education and the tremendous opportunity that folks had because of higher education in this state. And David, he certainly will be missed. Oh, there's no question about it, Aaron, and his legacy will live on for generations to come. Aaron Hartness reporting here on the Carolina campus as well. Now, Bill Friday was well known all across the state, not only because he had such close ties to this university for decades, but also because for 41 years, he was basically the face of UNC TV. His program is aired for 41 years. More than 1,800 programs have aired. And by the way, tonight on UNC television, biographical conversations with Bill Friday will air between 7 and 10 o'clock tonight. Now, more than 4,000 people have appeared on those programs over the years. We talked with one this afternoon who appeared on the program 16 times on 16 consecutive years. He asked questions in such a way that the context and premise of his question uh, told a story in and of itself, such as, uh, tell us how much the immigrant population is contributing to North Carolina. You see them every day. Give us some stories about how important they are and how much talent there is out there. Uh, so he was telling the story with the question, and then you would expand on it uh, with the answer. And that was, I think, a, a, real, uh, a real art. That's a very familiar voice we haven't heard for a couple of years. Former Governor Mike Easley talking with me this afternoon about his good friend Bill Friday. We'll be talking more with the former governor coming up tonight at 6 o'clock about how Bill Friday was so successful with the legislature, how he knew that consensus building was key to getting what was needed for this great university and for the people impacted by this university. That's coming up tonight at 6. And Deb, as I go, if we come back to you, you know, we talked about this earlier, that sometimes in death, people are remembered larger than they were in mm -hmm. life. That's not the case with Bill Friday. He was exactly mm -hmm. as large of a figure as we are remembering him today in life, all those 92 years. He will be missed by so many people. He was a personal friend of mine, I am proud to say, and I'm deeply saddened by his passing, but very fortunate to have been touched by his life. Deb? And you know, David, so many people were able to call him friend because he was just a man of such great power, but at the mm -hmm. same time, he was so gracious and so grounded in the way that he just approached people and approached life. Yeah, and he was so understated. I was telling someone earlier, one of my greatest memories of him, last time I had lunch with him, we came out of the Carolina Inn, uh, Carolina Club, we're walking outside. He was stopped by some students to talk. I saw a black town car waiting there, and I thought, well, that's nice. They've sent a car for Dr. Friday. That's very good. He's 90 years old. He can use that. A couple of minutes later, he walked by, <laughs> got in his old 20-year-old Volvo station wagon, and drove away himself. And I thought, of, of course, that's exactly who he is and always has been, and was still driving even up until maybe six months or so ago. Oh, you're right. He will be so missed. What a great man. David Crabtree, live at UNC. Thank you. We're going to see you again in the next half hour. And we do have other topics in the news to bring you today. In three minutes, we will lighten things up and head out to the State Fair. You're looking live at the huge crowd waiting to meet meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner at the WRL tent. Rockstar, okay. In every swing state, you have swing counties. New at 530, the last installment of our Main Street series takes us to a county in the mountains that has a tradition of not voting like its neighbors. And with that, the State Fair officially opened for the first full day of business. Our fair boasts the largest midway of any state fair with more than 100 rides. Sure and as sure. people head out to the fair this evening, the midway is filling up fast. That's where WRL's Ken Smith is taking in all the action. Hey, Ken. Uh, hey, Deborah, I'll tell you what.
kids and kids of all ages. Take a look at them. They're actually filling in the midway, making their way around this terrific area, getting ready to ride the rides, of course, eat their favorite fair foods, and, of course, play some games. And, you know, the big payoff of these games is winning some of these huge, huge stuffed animals. This one is almost as big as me. Well, not really. But I tell you what, take a look. We caught up with Kearney's Locklear and his three boys. They were out here on the Midway doing their thing. Uh, like so many families, they were shelling out a lot of money just to win a prize on, at the State Fair. And everywhere you look on the Midway, there are prizes of all shapes, sizes, colors, from sports jerseys to State Fair keepsakes and, of course, stuffed animals everywhere. And for families taking in the Midway, sometimes the lure of that stuffed animal is just too hard to resist. I'm probably spent right at um, $50 now. And you're just getting started? Yeah, already getting started. <laughs> That's a lot of money. It is. It's a lot of money, but it's the first time I've been here in 20 years. Ever since I graduated from high school, so I wanted to bring my boys. I tell you what, <laughs> hopefully Mr. Locklear has enough money at the end of the night to, after winning one of these stuffed animals, but you know, I can understand the lure of it, and truth be told, when you're working all this midway and you're taking all these games, you work of an appetite, so no wonder people are out here enjoying their favorite fair foods. And Deborah, um, maybe I'll bring this one back for you, how about that? Oh, great, that'd be fantastic, thank you so much. I know exactly where I want to put it, so thank you, Ken. And you're not the only one soaking up all the great weather, the atmosphere at the fair. Chief Meteorologist Greg Fisher is there as well. And, and Greg, I know uh, it looks like you have a lot of people right around you. Deb, indeed I do. In fact, uh, you could say that one of the main themes of every fair is the kids and enjoying the rides and so forth. So just a quick introduction here. I'm going to ask each one of them to tell all of you their names. First you. Britton. All right. Jackson. Jackson. Reagan. Reagan. Ben. And Ben. All right. You all having a good time? Yeah. All right. I know some of these guys have already been on the rides. They've got more guts than I do, but I imagine at some point I will be a uh, forced or I will force myself to do the same thing. So glad to have you all here. Uh, we have a forecast for you for a couple of different times for the fair tonight out in the midway. First, at 8 o'clock tonight, we're looking for temperatures to be in the low 60s. Just keep in mind, if you haven't headed out here yet, with these dry air masses, once the sun goes down, temperatures drop like an unadulterated rock. And so by the time we get to the time for the fireworks at 945, it'll be down into the low 50s. And so you'll definitely need a jacket, at least most normal people will. I might not, but I'm not normal. So I uh, just want to pass that along to you. All right. We had Tropical Storm Patty yesterday. Today, it is weakened to a tropical depression as of the 5 o'clock hour. The winds have dropped to 35 miles per hour. The center of circulation at 25.5 north, 72.1 west, and is forecast to eventually start moving. It's stationary now, but it's forecast to begin moving toward the southwest and will it be affecting the Bahamas. Doesn't look like it's going to become a big issue for them, uh, but certainly some squally rains and some gusty winds as we head on through tomorrow. Now, let's take a look at the sky cam as we look toward uh, the uh, fair and the uh, current numbers out at the airport. 72 is the current temperature. 73 was the high after a chilly start at 45. The humidity at 35%. The winds are variable at 6 and the pressure at 30.19 inches of mercury. Temperatures around the area right now ranging from around 70 at South Hill and Roxboro to 73 at Goldsboro and Southern Pines and one of the warmer readings, 74 at Fayetteville. As we take a look at the satellite and the radar mosaic, you can see a little bit of cloud cover in association with this weak front that's going to be coming through here this evening. No precipitation with it. It'll just switch our winds to the northeast and drop our temperatures back for one day as we head on toward uh, tomorrow, and then it'll warm right back up again on Sunday. So our forecast for tonight, we're looking for fair skies, appropriately enough. Temperatures late tonight dropping down into the 40s, and then tomorrow it'll be a sunny day, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, a little breezy at times out of the northeast and cooler with temperatures getting up into the mid and upper 60s. Then on the seven day, we immediately rebound into the 70s on Sunday with a bit of an increase in clouds. We have a small chance of rain Monday, a little better chance on Thursday, but neither day looks like a washout at this particular point in time, which is good. Now, 
Coming up at 5.30, I will try my hand at learning a new instrument. Not the tuba, but something new. Find out what that is and how I do. Coming up, that'll be at 5.30, and we'll see you then. Interesting. Okay, we'll look forward to it. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> well, the space shuttle Endeavour spent its life accelerating through the atmosphere. Look at how slow it's crawling now. In three minutes, just how fast it's going as the shuttle heads to its new home. The deadline to register to vote in North Carolina has now passed. You had to register or have the forms postmarked by 5 o'clock today. However, if you didn't register yet, you still have another chance. You can register if you vote early. Early voting starts October 18th and runs through November 3rd. You have to register in person in your home county when you vote and be sure to have proof of address with you. Keep in mind, though, this is only open through November 3rd. You cannot register and vote on Election Day. Still trying to make your mind up when it comes to the candidates? President Obama and Mitt Romney will face off in their second debate Tuesday night. You can watch the matchup right here on WRAL at 9 p.m. And the two men running for North Carolina governor will square off the same night. Walter Dalton and Pat McCrory meet at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. Both debates will be live on WRAL and streamed on WRAL.com and our mobile apps. Bad news from Wall Street today as the markets posted their worst weekly loss in four months. The Dow inched up two points today, not enough to counter days of losses, however. The Nasdaq dropped five points and the S&P dropped four and a quarter. The biggest show in Los Angeles is not in a theater this weekend. It's on the streets as the space shuttle Endeavour moves to its new home. Thousands of people line the streets for the retirement road trip. It's a hard one to miss. 170,000 pound vehicle, that's how much it weighs, is moving at a whopping two miles per hour. It should arrive at the California Science Center, a 12 mile trip sometime late tomorrow night. The estimated cost of moving the shuttle across town is more than $10 million. Jackie is here now with our top stories coming up at 5.30. Deborah, next at 5.30, we continue to look back at the extraordinary life of former UNC President Bill Friday. In fact, we'll head back out to the UNC campus for extended coverage of the passing of Bill Friday. Plus, let the fun begin. Today marks the first full day of the North Carolina State Fair.